This week's dream car is a 70 Boss 302 and it was an era where Trans Am racing was at its pinnacle. All the manufacturers were getting involved, they all wanted to win a championship and they were building cars to, for homologation just to go racing. You know, I remember seeing a Boss 302 run at Watkins Glen and ever since then I've had a soft spot in my heart, but a Boss 302, fairly run of the mill I'd think. Most of them are, but this one's a little unique. It's the only one ever built with air conditioning. Get out. And we've got the paperwork to prove it. That was gonna be my first question. So you've got a build sheet here. We've got a build sheet. What was unique about it, we also have the shipping sheet, is it went to the Ford Executive Garage. Some big shot at Ford wanted an air conditioned Boss 302. And the build sheet shows that the front coil springs were different than all other Boss 302s by the markings on it. The build sheet also shows that the heater box is a little bit different than all the rest, and it came with a clutch fan unlike any other Boss 302 which would only work for the air conditioning. Little screws where the heater box would normally be opened up for, they're not opened up. Wow. The real deal. It really is the real deal. So this car also represents a very desirable car on the market right now, but it's also a particularly good example of a Boss 3. Right. And the second he found out it was one of one, he decided to do a full-blown restoration to Mustang Club of America standards. So that means he's gone right through the underbody and the whole works. The whole thing, it's, it's ground up. They did a primer overspray restoration. Um, this particular plant, it was like a black primer as opposed to the red oxide primer, which is a little unique. Uh, all the chalk marks on the rear leaf springs, on the differential, on the drive shaft, all according to the build sheet, the way it was built. Um, the floor pans are all detailed out. The front suspension is, is just gorgeous on the car. I mean, a ground up restoration done properly, right nuts, right bolts right everything. And under the hood looks fantastic. Yeah, under the hood is, uh, you know, it's got some neat options too with the shaker, really stands out. It's got the intermittent wipers. Uh, of course, it's got the air conditioning, so it's got some neat options too. Well, so uh, I've got all of this paperwork. I suppose you're going to want me to go get the rest of it and uh, you're taking a drive, right? Well, I'm taking it for a drive. You can put the paperwork back in the office. <laughs> all right, well, you have fun. <laughs> As we talked about before, you know, what makes this car so unique is the factory air conditioning. But there's a whole bunch of other options this car has that make it kind of neat. It's got the shaker which comes through the hood and you can actually see the motor rocking back and forth. It's got the rear window louvers, it's got the, uh, the rear spoiler and the front spoiler. It's got the optional Magnum 500s as opposed to the, the pie plate hubcaps. Um, the interior is a little bit spartan, it's the standard interior, but it still has a tack, it still has the clock, which is kind of rare with the standard interior, and it's got a console and an AM FM stereo, so obviously this Ford executive wanted to hear the tunes and wanted to be kept cool in the summer. One of the other unique things is it's a white car, where most of these cars were grabber green and grabber blue, and the yellows and the oranges, kind of the wild colors, this was a little more subdued, a little more subtle, which is neat. The other thing, of course, it's got the famous Boss 302 stripes, which comes from its racing heritage. And talk about the racing heritage, the whole idea behind these Boss cars was to win a Trans Am championship for Ford. GM right now at this point was kicking their butts. So Ford came out with this motor. Their 68 motors, the tunnel port motors, just weren't doing the jobs. They kept blowing up. So Ford designed this Boss 302. The whole motors, the whole car was built around this motor. One of the things that was kind of neat about this is they had to make some horsepower. They were making 550 horsepower out of a little 302. The only way you're going to make that number is with some big RPM. So what they built is a real tough bottom end. They started with a four bolt main block, which was really a strong block. The second thing they did is they went to a steel crank. They had some steel rods with big 3 8 rod bolts. They had a good piston in this car. Then what they did is they had these giant heads that would flow like a big block Chevy. They had a 219 intake valve. They had runners the size of a big block Chevy. And they had a 780 Holly on top of the thing. Now the race cars also had these uh, Bud Moore Mini Plenums, which made, again, a lot more power. And they had these great big headers. So they actually made some big power. The street cars, unfortunately, got a little rev limiter, a 6,100 RPM rev limiter that most guys, as soon as they went around the corner, chucked in the garbage. Because these things would really run 7,500 RPM. And under 5,000 RPM, they just weren't making any real power. The other nice thing about the, the uh, car is because of the race program, they got some neat suspension. They got a heavier front spring. They got uh, some good shocks, a big sway bar in the front, a rear sway bar, 
They, uh, they got staggered shocks. Um, they only came with a four speed, which is kind of neat. You know, one of the few muscle carts you could not get in an automatic. And then the rear end ratios, they had all sorts of ratios. They had everything from a, um, a 391, a 411, a 430, um, just about anything. So depending on what track you were going at, you just change the center pumpkin and you're ready to go racing. Of course, they had a solid lifter motor too, so they could get that sort of RPM, and that's what gave it the famous boss sound. You know, when you get on it and you hear those uh, lifters just clattering away, it sounds like you're in a race car. It feels like you're in a race car. So keep in mind when you're uh, taking one of these things out for a drive, they need some RPM, but what a great car on a nice fall afternoon like this to go through some windy roads and feel like you're a Trans Am driver. In 1970, when this car was originally delivered, according to the original paperwork, $4,700. And that was with $970 worth of options. Now, according to this paperwork, the dealer cost was $3,450. The guy was doing really well. <laughs> I don't know if they make that much money on a Mustang now. I don't think so. So what happened after that? Well, obviously after that, in the early 70s, the gas crunch comes, prices go in, you know, go down. Um, you could have bought one for a couple of grand. Oh, then I wish I had it. slowly they creep up again. By the, uh, the late 80s, they hit a peak again. They drop again a little bit after the recession. Today, because this car is a one-off car, it's an MCA Grand National winner. It's got a ton of unique options. I mean, intermittent wipers on a Boss 302 and stereo and not all to mention here. all the go fast stuff. Um, cars got to bring 40 to 50,000 bucks. Wow. It's a good investment. Yes, sir, a real good investment. This is just one of a long line of dream cars coming to you at Dream Car Garage.